Chapter 5, Heroes and Masterminds. How'd he find him? Is bait gonna bust him out? <laughs> Even better. This isn't so bad. What is the baker doing? Our mounts are gone. Nyx must have untied them. Why won't she come? Why is she freaking out? Uh-oh. Oh, the snakes. Soulfang serpents. You need to stay very, very still. Uh, yep, that's my plan. Still as a mouse. Wait, are mice still? Oh no. No! Damn. We've got to get back inside before it comes. We got magic. Run, Callum! Uh oh, I got a bad feeling about this. That was close. Even Soren and Claudia look a little bit scared. Today is a <laughs> Wasting no time. Wait! Our laws tell us there is a way to choose a new royal line. Does anyone else here share Opeli's concern? Corvus? <laughs> Nobody? I am the law. Now or never. What? It won't be long before he goes after traitors. He's right. Look at their different reactions. Interesting. No one's gonna talk about the the eye and the thing. The kingdom of Durin. It's our only chance to find help. Is that Anya's kingdom? <gasps> no, no, no. This is a fake out. Right? No, it's a fake out. I want to believe. I want to believe it's a fake out. Someone's gonna help them. I saw his reaction. I saw his reaction to Viren taking the throne. After getting thrown under the bus like that by your own father, you would hope that that would wake you up a little bit. About Viren, he's not wrong. If no one's opposing him, and if he has all the power, what's stopping him from just declaring himself king as he did? You know, in a way, not much has changed. Ezrin is not dead. Ezrin still is the rightful heir to the throne, even if he's in prison. I feel like what's a bigger factor is just Viren's confidence. He's been struggling this whole series with figuring out how to lead and how to take the throne. And now with Erevos, he feels different. He's much more o open about it, and I feel like... That probably is one of the things that goes the farthest in swaying people's opinions. Confidence has its own brute force nature to it, where people who are sort of reasonable or second-guessing themselves, they're not going to oppose it. So Apelli is kind of just left hanging there. See? It's tricky. Just hold on to me. Oh, I mean, I guess I could do that if you don't think that would be... If I don't think that would be what? Weird. You're already weird. Yeah. Super weird. Exactly. Sure, sure, not weird. Put my arm around you seems... <laughs> Just stop. Gonna do... Oh my that. god, it hurts. I picked up a thing or two from Corvus. It's subtle, but if you look closely, you can see the Ambler's tracks. <laughs> Good sarcasm. I appreciate it. Come so on. Aaron? Come on. I'm here to help. Yes! I'm gonna get you out of here. So relieved. They've been playing with my heart with Soren for so long. Your dad was a good king. As crown guard, it was my job to make sure that nothing happened to him, no matter what. I just don't want to fail you too. Thanks, Soren. Yes. Yes! Finally! I feel so vindicated. I knew it from the beginning. I never once <laughs> let my let my feelings waver. That's a lie. I had doubts. But it's all part of the journey. One thing I've been thinking about Soren for a while is he's a great example of someone who is good at heart, but who has not done the work to really connect his vision of morality to something more personally meaningful and more rigorously tested, if you know what I mean. I think this is an arc that a lot of people experience. You start out, you grow up. From the beginning, you sort of define what's good as just being what's your environment and what do you know. That becomes the highest good. And I think that is where a lot of people stay. You know, I think a lot of people just, that's where they end up. The things they know, the things they've been told, that's the end of the story. It's just that's what good means. And anybody who's outside of that is an enemy or has been misled or something like that. But then I think over time with experience, it's natural to find flaws in that view and realize there are things that are beyond the normal story that you've been telling yourself since you grew up, sort of on auto autopilot, right? And that's a hard place to be, and that leads to a lot of turmoil. But I think that there's something nice that grows out of that, which is that from that point, you can start to build things that are more robust and more authentic. It's a character journey we see again and again. I think we saw it with Zuko. Zuko has his view of the world as this is good. You know, Fire Lord is good. Pleasing Father is good. But then going out into the world, meeting other people, challenge that view, 
which led to a crash, which then led to him re-emerging and being like a really amazing version of himself, which is really cool. So hopefully what this means is Soren has turned a corner on that a little bit. Is that a mirage or is the ambler getting closer? I see it too. <gasps> its foot is stuck again. Yeah, but she wouldn't need to be on it though because she can fly. The Sora and Ezra adventures, I'm here for that. We're gonna have to walk across that bridge without anyone seeing you. How are we gonna do that? Don't worry, I brought a disguise. Is it just a bag? You climb in and you'll be disguised as stuff in a sack. <laughs> How about I hide in the hay and you just pull the cart? That works. I am bringing hay to the horses. <laughs> Very hungry horses need hay. Hungry, hungry horses. Okay, okay, I'm, I'm sorry. Please stop yelling at me. Oh, no, I'm not mad. You just gotta hay them up, hay them up. <laughs> yeah, I didn't see that coming. Sorry, wait, the hay is glowing. Yeah, yeah it is. So? Nothing, it's pretty neat. Thanks, man, hay's the best. <laughs> <laughs> what is happening right now? What is this dialogue? Others might take a crown out of self-importance, but I... You're doing it to help us. To help everyone. Yes. Yes, that's right. That's why I know I can count on you, Claudia. Claudia doing all the hard work for him. She's convincing herself. Viren's like, I took the crown because, uh, 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 you're trying to help people? You're a good guy? Because you're the best daddy that ever existed. That's my special little girl. My special girl, Claudia. Everything's going to be okay, Dad. Uh-oh. I'm here for you. Can you be here for his eye? Well played. She will be a valuable asset. Claudia played she herself there. She is not an asset. She is my daughter. She can be both. <laughs> Come on out, everybody. Nice, the resistance. And the baker. He's important. Soren was the mastermind. Mastermind. I like it. That can be my new nickname. It even rhymes. Sorine the Mastermind. <laughs> I was about to say, what the hell? <laughs> that does not rhyme. Let him have it. Just let him have this one. You're the best crown guard a king could ask for. <laughs> wow, never seen bait warm up to anyone before. <sighs> this guy just loves physical labor. Just fly away. You don't need this thing. Can you not fly long distances? You can make it. I'll catch you. <laughs> really, really pulls all the weight in this group. You really think you have me cornered, don't you? You've forgotten something. She can fly. Oh yeah? What's that? Yeah. Oh, Soren told me he needed some bathroom time. He said he ate some bad cheese and now he's paying the price. <sighs> you do know what he means by paying the price. He means that he's- Yes, yes, I get it. No need to paint a picture. I would only need one color for that picture. <laughs> Brown. <laughs> it wasn't the horse, am I right? You are the greatest fighting force in the history of humankind! <laughs> Zadia hates us, but we will fight back! By attacking first. There is one unpleasant matter. What? <laughs> that crowd reaction. Ezran, in his last act as king, insisted that all those who no longer wish to fight be allowed to lay down their arms. Go on, leave us, cowards! <laughs> Amazing. Very subtle. It's brave. But I feel like Viren's gonna make an example out of you now. But even their families will know that they are deserters. They will wear a badge on their clothing, a badge of shame and cowardice, a broken link. I mean, it's like five people, so. It is better to be rid of our weak links today. He's got more confidence. Look, cut it out now. That won't stop. Help me, my wings are hurt. I can't fly. Can you walk? You're going back to Zadia and finding your brother as soon as your ride gets here. Is it, uh, Fifi? It is.
And Liar Lady. I was surprised to receive a message from Catullus. It's not signed, but I assume it's from the strapping young idiot. Dear Moon Lady. <laughs> it's better than what I said, Liar Lady. I'm sorry I let you down as king. It only took me a few days to mess everything up. Nah, it wasn't you. In your first few days as king, you showed more courage, mm -hmm. strength, and grace than most leaders show in a lifetime. Exactly. Goodbye, Ezrin. Oh, ho, ho, goodbye, <laughs> What about Moon Lady? She's just staying there. How are you going to Yeah. Be? Is she not here? How do you humans say it? Party time. That's not fooling anyone either. Please, you have to help me. <laughs> Rayla's so done. Get Zim back to the Ambler. I feel like Callum's gotta do something. He's just been like so helpless this episode. Stay right behind me. Callum, why aren't you running? I feel like it's been a bad couple episodes for Callum. He had a great start to the season, like learning these powers and learning more about himself, but I feel like as a person he's more hesitant and unsure than ever. It just seems like he's in the way. And that's like a weird thing to think about one of the main characters of the show. It's okay to be unsure. It's okay to be developing, right? But you gotta have something likable. You gotta have something that is impressive. And these episodes, these past two episodes, have been the opposite, I feel. Rayla, on the other hand, is just dominating everything. She's putting the entire journey on her own shoulders here. Right, sorry, sorry. Rayla is a hero. What? Mm -hmm. Rayla saves people. She's brave. Rayla is selfless, strong, and caring. That's what makes her a hero. That's what makes her... Rayla. And I watch her do it. <laughs> like I said in the last episode, I think Callum has a really great heart, and he's obviously a very decent person, right? But there's something about this whole interaction and him cheering Rayla up that falls flat to me, and I think it's because it's hard to feel encouraged by the words of someone who has not earned respect, you know what I mean? Compare this to an extreme. Compare this to if Uncle Iroh said this to Rayla, right? It'd be like, holy crap, someone like Iroh complimenting me, it's huge. I feel like if you demean someone's character to the point where they're kind of helpless, their advice isn't as meaningful, you know, their encouragement isn't as meaningful. I know I'm being, like, somewhat overly critical. Really, this is limited to the past two episodes, not Callum as a whole. That's just, like, what I'm feeling watching this scene. But the fact that Rayla responds positively to that speaks well of her feelings towards Callum. She doesn't feel the way I feel, apparently. And that makes some sense because what I'm talking about is really limited to this episode and the last. Callum ha has had some strong moments this season and at the end of last season, too. You are so... Oh, no. I'm, so I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I just got carried away. Next thing I knew, my, my lips were getting way ahead of me and... Shut up. Yeah. Wow. It makes me a little uncomfortable. It's not like there's no precedent for this. Like, we saw that Rayla really cared deeply about Callum. He made that heroic sacrifice for her when he used dark magic. She might have felt somewhat responsible for that as she watched over him suffering. He emerged from that with a new realization about himself. He was extra confident. He discovered magic, right? All those things were badass Callum, and that made sense. Uh, just the timing of this is a little bit weird, because I feel like these were pretty weak episodes for Callum, and so for them to wrap up with him getting the girl, it doesn't resonate with me as strongly as it could have. In a more positive light, what really does resonate with me, Soren, finally, this is the Soren I've been waiting for. I'm thrilled about Soren's choice. I admit I even questioned that at times, especially season two, when he was like taking swings at little girls and trying to kill Ezrin. I think in hindsight, you can chalk that up to very deep confusion about the world and his values. But I think that the elements are there. The elements were always there, that he is someone who cares and he wants to do the right thing and he wants to be a hero. He wants to be a warrior for the good, but he just hasn't really thought critically about what that means and what his own morality is. And rather it's just something that is handed to him by Viren and from his immediate environment. And his experiences have sort of made him question that. And also Viren 
Viren himself is sort of what destroyed that kind of thinking because Viren cast him aside for his own convenience. And if that's not a wake-up call, I don't know what, what would be. So great stuff from Soren. So it looks like Ezrin will rejoin the party. I heard that the initial plan was never for him to go back to the kingdom, but I'm glad he did because I think that was really fun. It was a really interesting mini arc, even if it was short. It was great for Ezrin's character and also it was great for Corvus. And it's at the stage for the war, which is really exciting. I imagine that's either going to start this season or that's going to be like the, the big cliffhanger going into season four is the war between the humans and Zadia. But that's it for episode five. I'll see you guys next time for episode six. Thank you.